Welcome back. In our last episode, we covered OpenTelemetry's data model and how it uses context to tie metrics, traces, and logs together into a single unified system. Today, we're going to go over the project itself, what it is, what components it contains, and how we work on it. Now, we're also going to cover what OpenTelemetry isn't. So if this is what you came here for, let me get this out of the way really quick. OpenTelemetry is not a database. There is no OTELDB, and there never will be one maintained by the project. Instead, you connect OpenTelemetry to your database or analysis tool of choice. We'll go over why later in the episode, but if that's what you were wondering, now you know. OK, so what is OpenTelemetry? OpenTelemetry is two things. One, a universal language for computer systems to use to describe what it is they're doing. And two, a means to transmit that information to a data storage system where it can be viewed and analyzed. Hence the name telemetry. Telemetry is defined as the process of recording and transmitting the readings of an instrument, or data collected at remote or inaccessible points and transmitted to receiving equipment for monitoring, displaying, and recording. Telemetry is an important part of aerospace systems, and when we hear the word telemetry, it can conjure images of rockets and satellites. But actually, telemetry systems were originally built to monitor electric power distribution. The first telemetry system, installed in Chicago in 1912, used telephone lines to transmit data on the operation of a number of electric power plants to a central office. Monitoring a distributed system of power plants connected together into an electric grid is honestly not that far from monitoring a distributed system of computer programs connected together into a single application. In a hundred years, the only thing that's really changed is the material the wires are made out of. Okay, that's not entirely true. What are the main pieces that make up a telemetry system? There are three. A data protocol for describing the data, instrumentation for creating the data, and a transmission system for sending the data to a place where it can be stored and viewed. What do those three pieces look like for open telemetry? Let's have a look. First, there is the data protocol, OTLP. In our last episode, we covered this in detail. If you haven't watched that episode, there's a link in the description below. The second piece is instrumentation. Writing instrumentation requires two things, a schema, for describing common operations, such as HTTP requests and SQL calls. In OpenTelemetry, we call these definitions semantic conventions. Kind of a weird term, but at least it makes it clear that we aren't talking about other kinds of schemas, like a database schema or something. Besides semantic conventions, the other piece you need for writing instrumentation is pretty straightforward, a set of interfaces for recording all of these conventions as logs, metrics, and traces. We need to have these interfaces in every programming language. In OpenTelemetry, we call this the API. So just know that when you hear OpenTelemetry API, we're talking about application interfaces for writing code and instrumentation, not networking interfaces or other kinds of APIs. Next up, we have the transmission system. There are two parts to a transmission system. The client that runs within the application, which receives data from all the API calls and then serializes it for export. Note that in OpenTelemetry, we have a very loose coupling between the instrumentation API and the client that does all of the work, which we call the SDK. The OpenTelemetry SDK is a framework which provides three main kinds of plugins. Samplers, which can decide whether to record data or not. Processors, which provide lifecycle hooks for intercepting and modifying the data as it's being created. And exporters, which send batches of data out over various protocols. OTLP is the default protocol, but most common metrics, logging, and tracing protocols have an exporter available. After the data leaves the SDK, it can be sent to a proxy, which acts as an intermediary between the application and the data storage system. For many practical reasons, it's helpful to create a tiered system of proxies, which can process the data while handling back pressure and network issues. In OpenTelemetry, this proxy component is called the collector. The collector is a kind of telemetry Swiss army knife. Once operators learn how to use it, they often find it to be an invaluable tool for managing all of the issues and complexities which can arise when dealing with telemetry in production. You can even use it to run a bake-off, comparing different analysis tools, or to smoothly manage a transition between storage systems. And that's it. 
That's a complete telemetry system. Now, you might be asking, why just telemetry? Why not also a data storage system or an analysis tool? And the answer is standards. We can all agree on what a telemetry system should look like. We can all agree on what data systems should admit when they're describing themselves. And this is really useful because when we build our distributed systems, we build them out of so many third-party libraries and services. It's really helpful for all of those libraries and services to speak the same language. It's also really helpful for application developers who may want to switch storage and analysis tools and don't want to have to rip and replace thousands of lines of instrumentation every time they want to do that. But can we all agree on how to store and analyze this data? The answer is not really. And also, do we even need to agree? I mean, there's so many different ways to analyze data with different trade-offs between features, costs, and scalability. It doesn't really make sense to have a one-size-fits-all solution to storing and analyzing data. In fact, because OpenTelemetry's OTLP protocol is such a new and novel idea, there's actually a green field of opportunity for data scientists and product developers to come up with interesting and novel ways to make use of this data. So, the OpenTelemetry project draws the line at telemetry, and instead of building our own database, we want to work with all the different database developers out there today. In fact, if you yourself are working on an interesting analysis tool or a novel data system, we encourage you to join the OpenTelemetry project and make this shared language even better. Okay, so a quick review before we go. OpenTelemetry consists of the following components. The collector, our telemetry pipeline tool, OTLP, our data protocol, and the semantic conventions, which standardize how you describe common resources and operations when writing OTLP. Then, in each language, we have an instrumentation API, pre-written instrumentation for most common OSS libraries, an SDK, which is a framework and a set of plugins the application owner installs for processing and exporting instrumentation. All of these components are defined in the OpenTelemetry specification and maintained by the OpenTelemetry community, which you can find on GitHub, Slack, and Zoom. And that's us. That's the OpenTelemetry project. If you like this and would like to know even more details, please check out my free ebook from O'Reilly, OpenTelemetry and the Future of Observability. You can find a link in the description below. Do check it out. I promise you it's quite short. Finally, one quick request. This is the third video I've made in this new style, and I'm wondering how it's landing. Is it fun, boring, interesting, exciting, enlightening, confusing, terrible? I would love feedback because I would like to keep making these, and I want them to be as fun and interesting as possible. So if you don't mind, please leave a comment below and let me know how it's going, or like the video or subscribe to let me know that you'd like more content like this. In our next episode, we're going to get into how OpenTelemetry is designed to integrate with other open source projects, a feature I've been waiting for the internet to give me since I started writing open source projects myself. Hope to see you there.